Hello and welcome back to Rust Comprehensive Rush Course. In this particular video, we are going to look at uh, lifetimes and lifetime annotations. Uh, so lifetime in Rust are a compile time feature used to ensure that references are valid for as long as they are needed. Uh, lifetime prevent dangling references by ensuring that references do not outlive the data they point to. Uh, lifetime annotations don't change how long any of the references live. Instead, they describe the relationship between the lifetimes of multiple references. Now, to understand lifetimes, uh, every reference in Rust has a lifetime, which is the scope for which that reference is valid. Most of the time, lifetimes are implicit and inferred, just like most of the time, types are inferred. However, Similar to type annotations, you sometimes need to declare lifetimes explicitly to help the compiler understand the relationship between the lifetimes of references. Now, syntax of lifetime annotations, uh, lifetime annotations are denoted with an apostrophe followed by some descriptive name, usually short like apostrophe A, apostrophe B. We'll see some examples about that. But the lifetime name uh, apostrophe static is a special lifetime that means the reference data can live for the entire duration of the program. Let's look at some examples here. Now you know when I do and i32, this is a reference to a particular integer, unsigned, in, assigned integer 32. Now if I want to do a reference with the explicit lifetime, I will say apostrophe a and i32. This is how you create a explicit lifetime reference. Now next, if you want to do a mutable reference with an explicit lifetime, you do the same thing where you say mute i32. So these are the three different types of uh, different ways you can do this. Now function signatures with lifetimes, how we, we do that? When defining functions that take references as parameters, you might need to specify lifetimes on the function uh, signature to ensure the references passed into the function are valid. For example, so if I create a function longest, I will create a lifetime for that. And then x, one of the argument, I'm going to give it a reference, a string and y is also copy this over and this returns the same reference to a lifetime string now inside this i'll say if x dot length is greater than y dot length in this case return x else return y so in this example uh, the function longest takes two string references and returns a string reference uh, the lifetime annotation indicates that the return types lifetime is related to the lifetime of the parameters x and y that's why we have the same uh, same annotation now let's look at how structs work with lifetimes when you are storing references in a struct Rust needs to know the lifetimes of those references to ensure the data referenced by the struct is valid as long as the struct is. So, for example, if I create a struct important excerpt, I give a lifetime, and inside this I making an item for part and this one let's say string so now in this particular case this struct has one field part that holds a string slice uh, which is reference which is a reference to part of the string now the lifetime ensures uh, that important excerpt cannot outlive the string it references now there's some lifetime Ellison rules. Uh, Rust applies three rules to infer lifetimes when you don't explicitly annotate them. 
allowing you to omit lifetimes in common scenarios. Uh, these rules apply to functions or methods. Now, if the compiler can apply these rules to determine unambiguous lifetimes, it doesn't need explicit annotations. So each parameter that is a reference gets its own lifetime parameter. Next, if there is exactly one input lifetime parameter, that lifetime is assigned to all output lifetime parameters. And if there are multiple input lifetime parameters, but one of them is reference to self or reference to mutable self for methods, the lifetime of self is assigned to all the output lifetime parameters. These rules cover a significant number of cases and help keep function signatures concise and, and readable. Now let's look at lifetime annotations in method definitions. So when defining methods on structs with lifetimes, you need to annotate the lifetime similarly to functions. So for example, have an implementation. Let's say important. Was and exit and say a inside that I have a function which has a reference to self I thirty two comes back let's say three function and nouns and return part pass it a reference to self and nouns meant of a reference to self and this returns back a reference to string oops i think this is meant to string yes and then inside i'll say print ln and say attention please give it a value of the announcement and return here self dot part so if you see how the how the lifetime annotation in method definitions work next thing that we'll look at is static lifetime now as i mentioned the static lifetime uh, is the longest possible lifetime and it lasts for the entire duration of the program all string literals have the static lifetime uh, example how you can explicitly said it is you can say reference to static string equal to I have a static lifetime so lifetimes are so this is how you can define a static lifetime to a string which has which will live for the entire duration of the program now in conclusion, lifetimes are a fundamental part of Rush approach to memory safety. They allow the compiler to ensure that references do not, do not outlive the data they point to. Uh, by using lifetime annotations, you help the compiler understand how lifetimes, lifetimes of different references relate to each other, ensuring that your Rush programs are both safe and efficient. While the compiler can infer lifetimes in many cases, Thanks to the lifetime elision rules, understanding how to manually annotate lifetimes is crucial for working with complex scenarios uh, where the compiler needs your guidance. Uh, so if you have any questions on this, please uh, leave comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.